Today I'm gonna to be talking about why I've stopped buying stocks and you're really not going to like the answer of this. I'm also gonna be talking about inflation, more specifically RPI and why this has become a concern for some institutions in the UK. I'm also gonna be talking about a lot of the retailers comparing this to one of my holdings in Boohoo and analyzing why some results seem a lot better than the others, but overall my opinions of the industry and why perhaps I'm still a little bit bullish on Boohoo, for instance, despite their poor results. And we've also got the comment of the week to start with which I'm loving it it is great video should have played out with I am the one and only your real name is Chesney Hawks right how did you know this hair is in tribute of Chesney Hawks the one and only obviously there's no other reason for growing long hair absolutely not at all but I appreciate the comment and if you like this video, please drop one of these to help beat that YouTube algorithm as it is much appreciated. So the UK government could face a massive bill over the RPI change. Now this is the retail price index. And this is interesting to me because it's saying, look, there's a potential 40 billion pound compensation bill. And the likes of BT, Marks and Spencer's Ford UK pension schemes are challenging this. And this is because some of their older pension schemes are based on the RPI index. And what they're saying is that they're gonna change this and make it identical to C. RPIH, which in turn means that it's going to be more accurate because RPI has always been about 0.9% above the CPI, the consumer price index, and therefore obviously there's some concern because, well, their pensions, I'm going to guess here, I don't know for sure, but their pensions are backed by RPI, and if RPI is higher and they're going to match that rate of inflation, then those that have those pensions are going to obviously be quite happy with that and it's the same for gilts here as well and it's like uh, the people that are investing in these types of bonds are obviously refuting this they don't like this because obviously they want the higher rate they want the better rates on their investment although it's it's a legacy system and it has been so for some time if you look at this article here it says that it's a legacy measure that continues to publish with it in accordance of the statistics and registration act 2007 however this has not been found to read this uh, meet the standard for designation as a national sta uh, statistic in 2013 so it's not really that surprising that in 2030 it's going to change it's going to be cpih instead but obviously it's causing a lot of concern because people want this higher number obviously it reflects better and it did obviously impact public pensions in the past overall i don't think it's something to worry about i unless you're an investor in bonds and at the moment why would you be invested in bonds unless you're really close to retirement and you found some bonds that you've done a risk analysis on there is really little to no value of them even if they're hovering about three percent the risk to reward ratio is not nice especially in a rising interest rate environment in which if interest rates rise the bond price is going to drop and the yield will increase on the bonds so it's more attractive to buy at but the yield increases because the bond price drops so if you're expecting interest rates to rise then obviously buying bonds now just means the share price or the bond price is going to drop and i don't like that i don't think there's good value there let's say inflation was lower and let's say that the interest rates were at 10%, then of course bonds would be very attractive, but I really don't think there's a place for them in this investment strategy. Now, JD Sports has smashed it out of the park. They've had some fantastic results. They've mentioned that their pre-tax profits are about £655 million. And this is up from £324 million a year earlier. Their dividend in total has now been risen to a zero point or 35 pence a share from 29 pence a share. A huge move. And they've also seen revenues climb to 8.5 billion from 6.1 billion or an increase of 2.4 billion pounds however it's not as good as it seems and there's a few reasons for this now firstly aj bell's investment director had noted that the company's financial period ended before the ukraine war unfolded and inflation surged fair enough there's more to this we also look into their results here and you can see that their comparison period is a one year like for like. Now typically I'd agree with a one year like for like, however, this 2021 52 week period ended in the 30th of January 2021. This means that there's going to be lockdowns and trading restrictions in the midst of this and obviously this is going to show a lower level of performance and therefore it's going to look a lot better than it actually is. I would prefer if a company used a two or a three year like for like for the time 
time being so that we can see a greater comparison period without having to trawl through multiple different accounts. So it looks like JD Sports has done very well, but the results ended at the 30th of January, and this is five months behind. Aside from that, you look into the rest of the industry, which we're getting a little bit out of sportswear and more into fashion. Zalando warns on profits. Now, their shares have dropped about 14% since that article, but what they've said is that they see they expect their full year revenues to be about 0 to 3% growth, and they're saying that apparently under, like the underlying earnings is going to be between 154 to 223 million. But it also no longer assumes a rebound of consumer confidence in the short term. That's quite a devastating update saying, you know what, look, we're not going to have a rebound. Things are looking pretty grim. This recession is going to hit. And there's a lot of fear. And this, in my opinion, is a perfect time to buy. But I'm not buying. And I will get more to that later on in the video. Again, they're also saying here that there's many untapped opportunities in the fashion market, and they believe over the long term, their strategy and long-term goals are not changed. And therefore, that is something to also keep in mind. Now, on the other on the other side of things here, Associated British Foods, or the parent company of Primark, now they've said that their quarterly revenue growth has been fueled by price hikes. Now, they've seen a 32% increase in group revenues to 3.03 billion pounds. However, when we look at Primark itself, their quarterly sales grew 81% year on year and 69% year to date. Although we're looking at, again at a comparison period where there was trading restrictions. When you compare it back to pre-pandemic, which is what I like here, they were 4% higher. And that still is quite an impressive recovery. And it says, hey, look, we've got positive like for likes at the moment. That's a strong sign. However, albeit of more particular note here that whilst Primark has seen quite a surge in recovery, the ones that might really be pushing the overall revenue growth could likely be that of obviously their more stable stable food and grocery side of things. Look at the ingredients, it's up 24%. All of these have had pretty consistent growth, and it's very likely that during the pandemic that they weren't impacted that much either. So it's quite a uh, conglomerate, quite a broader business, and it's likely to survive during tougher economic times. And with Primark now moving on to click and collect, and they're moving somewhat into an online store, there could be more competition for Boohoo. Now, in terms of Boohoo, Trainline CFO has now joined Boohoo. He was a non-independent director, I believe, of the board of Boohoo, and he's now becoming the CFO to replace, I believe, I forgot the name of him. I've, it was just in my head a second ago, but effectively... This is now the, uh, the CFO of Trainline. He has previous experience in Amazon Europe as a financial uh, CFO. And also, I believe, and there was one more thing, and it's also slipped my mind. I am not with it today. I have just passed my CBT. I'm very happy about that motorcycle test. However, I cannot for the like of me remember his previous experience. I also believe he worked at ASOS as an operations director, but that night might not be the right company here, but there is definitely some information online elsewhere. Now, Boohoo has also seen their holdings increase. Now, the Knights of the Realm, or the Round Table, Camelot Capital Partners, it's not quite the name I remember King Arthur being associated with, but we'll go with it anyway. And they're also registered in the United States, so uh, I guess they did a lot of traveling back in that time. But... They've now opened a position of 4.59%. Now, this is interesting. We've not really seen much moves in terms of large shareholder positions other than that of Norway's central bank. So to see another company buy in, it could be the sign of a promising time, although Boohoo's short ratio is at about 8% at the moment. Now, you might be going, okay, Oz, why aren't you buying? What's this clickbait now? What's going on? Like, why aren't you buying in your portfolio? And truth be told, it's because I'm trying to zone out of the markets. I've not stopped buying indefinitely, but I was dollar cost averaging into the markets every single week. I think this is almost unnecessary. I think it puts too much time and attention into the daily or weekly volatility of share prices, and I don't think that's something I should really prioritize. After all, why would I sit here on my phone watching share prices like a, a lemon? Like, if you're sat there on your phone every single day going, oh, I wonder what this share price is at. Oh, look, it's fallen by three pence, and you check 10 minutes later. Oh, look, it's fallen by two and a half pence. It is pointless. You're wasting your time. Therefore, I've decided, you know what, look, I'm going to keep up to date with the news, I'm going to keep up to date with the financials, but quite frankly, unless a price target's hit, I'm not going to bother. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do monthly deposits, and I'm going to use that cash almost immediately. I could be setting limit buys. Limit buys could be an effective way of reaching a price target, or I can just say, oh, the voice crack was high on that one. Or I could just say, you know what, look, I, I may not be able to time the market, I'm just going to buy a block of the shares I want to hold, and just keep doing that every single month. 
This gives me less time looking at these share prices all the time, and it allows me to remain focused on my true goals, which is building capital. Now, if my money is in the markets and it's doing its own thing passively, I can focus on the greatest return on investment available to me. Because at the moment, obviously, my portfolio is down over 50%, the best return on investment I can get is by reading is by learning, by absorbing as much information as possible. There is never a point where you should feel that you have mastered life because quite frankly, that's a load of rubbish. You need to be focusing and realizing your own weaknesses, using that and identifying your own weaknesses to therefore develop and improve. And I don't mean unnecessary things like, oh, how to become better at solitaire because quite frankly, unless you can compete for money or it's just a fun hobby, what's the point? I mean more productive hobbies, things that you can see a positive change with. Now, one of the reasons I got into actually motorcycling is because I wanted to sort of push myself and I wanted to condition myself as a male to become stronger. Now, if you've ridden a motorcycle before and when you especially first start, being on the roads is scary. Other drivers have absolutely no regard for you. Some do, most of them don't. And they're in these big boxes, so they're quite aggressive. If they're sat there in their car going vroom vroom, right? They're like, well, I'm going to take the space because, well, I've got a metal box and they haven't, so they'll move out of the way. And usually the bikers can't move out of the way. But I digress. It, pro it programs your mind to go, okay, you know what? Look, be alert, be aware. But because you're putting yourself through that sort of risk, you condition yourself to become stronger. And now I can relate this to the stock market. By having volatility, by having these investments that, in my opinion, I've seen my investments drop by over 50%. Boohoo is down 60% at the moment. It's conditioning. This is money that is inconsequential to me at the moment. I believe this portfolio will be worth so much more in the future. Therefore, why should I worry about the, the current volatility of this? If I continue buying, I believe in my strategy. Over the longer term, it will likely do well. And if it doesn't, I'll under identify some fundamental mistakes and I would have learned something new. As I say, the greatest return on investment is in yourself. So that goes to it, right? I'm not buying more shares at the moment. Next week, I'll input about £750 and I'm going to split it between Games Workshop and Boohoo, Set and Forget. I'm also going to be changing the portfolio update slightly. So usually I'm talking about the UK stocks I'm buying now. That's a load of bollocks. I'm sick of that. That is the most boring and just bland title update ever. That will be once a month. I'm going to be doing a wider range of things, covering more topics and keeping it more exciting. I mean, exciting in the UK markets isn't much. The most exciting thing we've probably had is that Ocado has actually raised £575 million in a placing and secured a £300 million banking facility. Now, they did this via primary bid. Now, this is something that I personally would like. Primary bid allows you to be involved in the primary investments. This means that, well, the primary offering of shares. Primary offering of shares is not like the stock market where it's secondary and you sell basically shares in circulation, buy and sell amongst others, you buy it directly from the institutions. And they usually give you a discount for this to make it attractive. So it's worth looking into primary investments or primary bid in particular, because they did offer this for Ricardo, as there could be some opportunities here with some of your holdings. And I think going forward in the next 12 months, we may see some more share dilutions, placings, or even more capital raising in the form of even um, revolving credit facilities, as well as obviously listings onto the markets. So so there could be some good opportunities ahead and it's worthwhile being aware and alert and being able to achieve it. So have a fantastic day.